In today's video, we talk about inflammation. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and in today's video I want to talk about inflammation. Now first thing I want to say about inflammation is I'm not an expert, I'm not a doctor, but I thought it would be cool to discuss kind of my observations of things that I've seen when it comes to fat loss, getting leaner, dieting, um, and just kind of how training, cardio, recovery, all that stuff can go into having success. And so. The idea behind the video is something that I've noticed for a few years now, and I didn't really notice it initially. Um, I kind of thought that other factors were at play, but let's just do the scenario here. You do a long diet, maybe 16, 18 weeks, and you're really struggling to drop weight, right? Now for my particular case, I want to highlight a contest prep I did. So I did a contest prep and I dieted for 18 weeks. The final week, um, what we call peak week if you're a competitor. The, the training intensity is still there for the most part, but the last couple days before the show, the training intensity is backed off to make sure your muscles are recovered. Um, the cardio is tapered down to make sure, again, that you're recovered um, and that you have full detail in your muscle because one thing you don't want on stage is to have uh, torn up muscles that are still in recovery because they won't look as sharp, right? So you kind of reduce your training intensity, reduce your cardio intensity. You might be adding in some carbohydrates and stuff like that during the week, depending on how you do things. I don't think that's at play. And one thing I noticed was I would consistently drop several pounds during peak week. Um, which when you're struggling at that body composition, once you know, as you get leaner and you have less body fat to lose, you know that every pound just feels like significantly more difficult. And so what I've noticed during these periods was it got awfully easy to drop weight. Now, did I drop body fat during that time? That's debatable. But what I want to talk about here is inflammation because this is something that's come to my attention a lot lately and something I really pay a lot more attention to when it comes to those that I'm working with. One of my favorite questions to ask is, when's the last time you had a day off? When is the last time you rested, recovered? Because what I feel like happens a lot of times, when we get into a state where we wanna get leaner and lose more weight, we stop taking rest days. We stop recovering. We will do something every single day. We will push ourselves to the brink every single day. Drop sets, going to failure, cardio, uh, extra time in cardio, intense cardio, lower calories. And what I've noticed is there tends to be a little bit of whole body inflammation that can go on at this point. And so when you're inflamed, when you have inflammation in the body, again, this is just my theory, uh, it holds on to some, some extra fluids, right? As you're recovering, as it's repairing, it's like a stress state. Your body, it's got cortisol through the roof and it's, it's in a constant state of um, almost chronic inflammation. And so what I've seen with this is hey, let's take a day off, let's take two days off, which can be very difficult to do for someone that's got a deadline of a show and this is where coaching can kind of become necessary, right? So hey, I need you to take a day off, I need you to take two days off and voila, hey coach, I don't know what's going on, I didn't train for two days, I didn't do cardio for two days and I woke up and I'm three pounds lighter, right? And so did they necessarily lose three pounds of body fat? Maybe not, probably lost a little bit of body fat in my, in, in, in my opinion, because what you've actually allowed the body to do is kind of catch up to itself. You're always running one step ahead and by allowing the body to kind of do its job, recover and adapt, you are then in a better position. So where else have I seen this? Another place that I've really seen this is when we're talking about a powerlifting competition. Because with powerlifting, to get the most out of an athlete, you have to do what's called an overreaching phase. So you kind of overreach right and then you recover and then you slingshot to some new PRs and that's how we kind of prepare for the meet. We want to overreach depending on how you're, 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 you're setting up your training program. You want to overreach prior to the meet, you know, maybe a couple weeks out with some high intensity but lower volume and then you allow your body to adapt so you recover so you drop the training volume a little bit. 
keep the intensity high so you don't lose the neural adaptations that go along with one rep max lifting. That's powerlifting, guys. Okay, and then you see some super compensation, you see some recovery, and then you get this effect of an athlete doing better at the meet. Now, what happens during that week when we taper down training volume, so there's less total training volume, and I might even have them reduce their accessory work, I notice a huge drop in weight, um, you know, up to three, four, sometimes five pounds on the scale. Each day, the scale will just keep dropping. And for anyone who's ever done a powerlifting meet, you know that the training um, can be just so intense when you're trying to get better and you're doing squats and bench and deadlifts multiple days per week along with your normal training. Um, you know, you just have this constant kind of stiffness and soreness throughout the body. And so I also noticed it with powerlifters, right? The reduction in infl inflammation from the less training volume allows their body to drop some weight. And I think it has a lot to do with that inflammation. So just wanted to start the discussion, see if you guys have noticed this at all where, you know, oh, hey coach, I went on vacation for three days and I came back lighter and I didn't train, what's going on? Or, um, you know, with me, it was the hurricane. You know, I had been training pretty consistently and I had to take three or four days off from the hurricane. I was expecting to step on the scale and see like a bloated number and it was actually down. And I think it's just because like all the soreness in my body has gone. So um, just something I want to discuss with you guys. I know when we're working on fat loss, it can be very difficult to not see the scale moving down, but that doesn't mean it's not adjusting. That doesn't mean your body fat is not getting lower. It might mean that you're just so inflamed, there's so much inflammation in your body that you're not seeing it, right? Because your body is not actually adapting and recovering. So maybe I suggest a recovery day, two recovery days. I know it can sound crazy to say, take two complete days off from the gym. And I'm talking Netflix and chill. Um, whatever that means for you, don't go to the gym, don't do cardio, actually allow your body, the machine that it is, to adapt and recover. All right, guys, that's the thoughts for today. It's Wednesday, uh, leaving tomorrow for the Olympia, but I'm going to get a video out for you guys tomorrow as well. And then once I get to Las Vegas, my man Chad Nutter will be picking up the slack for me. I don't have time to shoot video, edit video, so Chad's going to come there and do all that work for me. We'll get some good shots of the trip. So. If you guys uh, want to come along for the ride, I'll do that for you and I'll talk to you tomorrow.